um, we looked at the um, big picture where we had operator A and operator B, uh, which were connected through the network to network interface. Uh, could we allow a mechanism through which an operator could program the infrastructure of another operator through possibly a memorandum of understanding or through a contract? Well, it is true. This is known as the network first function virtualization infrastructure as a service. The framework or the rules of uh, engagement or implementation are going to be such that we have, let's say, two service providers, A and B, or uh, one and two. Uh, service provider one instantiates virtual network functions on the network function virtualization infrastructure on service provider two. So uh, the since the user or the client is connected to um, network function virtualization infrastructure of uh, A or one, so it is the responsibility of service provider one to provide end-to-end -end services across both NFVIs. So the advantage is going to be uh, multifold. First, uh, because of geographical uh, um, independence in terms of uh, location and proximity, uh, the latency and reliability uh, requirements could be met for real-time services and for mission-critical applications. Uh, this could also uh, serve as, 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 a, as an advantage to achieve compliance to the regulatory constraints by different government entities on location of processing and storage. Let's take an example uh, of how possibly network function virtualization could be achieved in a specific uh, scenario. So we've got two actors. Uh, so these two actors both agree uh, to have the joint network function virtualization infrastructure. Um, this is going to be like uh, infrastructure as a uh, uh, infrastructure as a service cloud computing environment, which is integrated or coupled with the uh, network as a service infrastructure. So this is going to provide on-demand connectivity with a defined set of uh, service uh, termination and access points. So uh, we can uh, read the description here. We can understand that since all the virtual network functions are uh, location independent, this capability shall improve the reliability and latency. A good comparison would be to have a look at the traditional approach. The traditional approach basically was manual, especially uh, engineered for uh, wholesale uh, services between two service providers. In this case, the service provider one was required to negotiate individual lease lines, cloud computing resources with service provider two. And then at that particular moment, uh, assembling and operating the infrastructure for end-to-end -end services required intensive coordination between the two service providers, uh, especially if some something went wrong on troubleshooting and corrective regime was required to be carried out. The traditional approach now replaced with programmability approach has some advantages. Let's look at that as well. The network function virtualization infrastructure provides the compute nodes with infrastructure as a service capabilities. And these are provided at runtime for virtual network functions to be executed by service provider one. So it means service provider one gets uh, real time updates on the infrastructure because it's part of the programming implementation. And if there is something wrong, then without involving service provider two, service provider one could possibly take corrective actions. Now the role of uh, programmability in this particular uh, scenario is going to be uh, more computing intensive. In this case, uh, service provider one is going to be authorized. The network as a service it has to be provided on demand by service provider two with authorized termination within the network function virtualization infrastructure of service provider two. Then uh, some kind of separation between data and control planes have to be uh, implemented because the service provider one is now accessing the network function virtualization infrastructure of, uh, of two, not the data, but the uh, control uh, services of it and the data services, but not the data itself. Now, the transition challenges that one could imagine would be that not all network function virtualizations could be virtualized. So it means that the uh, infrastructure that is jointly hosted by the two and programmable by, uh, by the two 
must have interfaces for existing network elements and it's not possible on uh, all in all the situations similarly uh, once we talk about deploying uh, how is it going to impact the operations and the business uh, support systems uh, because uh, traditionally the oss and bss um, do not have the virtualization part as their inherent feature uh, so it means that uh, altogether a new set of functionality and operations have to be orchestrated um, uh, at the OSS and BSS. Similarly, the network operations uh, which are uh, mostly based on uh, APIs, uh, these have to be taken as applications which are running on certain platform. It means that uh, the more traditional hardware which would run only a limited set of applications um, this would require now software defined um, virtual network functions. So it means that uh, uh, we are now going to look at uh, special uh, network elements, uh, special hardware, uh, which would be uh, based on a cloud technology, uh, which is programmable uh, as the computer nodes for the virtualization. We need to in incorporate a skilled resource operator staff because we need now much more computer intensive operations and then last but not the least the business practices now need to support the network function virtualization infrastructure as a wholesale bit service or offer between operators uh, with the detailed requirements of the SLA the service level agreement and other terms and conditions the advantages are numerous but uh, in, in short, we can, we can uh, talk about the sharing and pooling of resources that could possibly take place, um, uh, which, would, which makes these uh, in, uh, in, uh, localized infrastructures more location independent. Then full control of computing resources is now going to have more uh, uh, efficiency and uh, efficiency and flexibility. Uh, likewise, um, the service providers would now be able to uh, uh, respond to an increasingly large number of customers. So the customer base could vary uh, significantly and uh, uh, then uh, the infrastructure is now not going to be depleted or exhausted. The reference is essentially the same that is uh, ATIS report back in 2013.